could you read this out, Luke? Give us your kind of Bing Crosby voice. Lifetime presents <laughs> OSW Sing the Christmas Classics. 48 monotonous tracks such as Meow, 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 Including all your favorites, like I've got these presents for you. They're up in my bum. Up in my bum. And who could forget? Buy Jared Gold, buy Jared Gold, buy Jared Gold, buy Jared Gold. Pyramid scheme, pyramid scheme, pyramid scheme. Oh my god, here comes Dixie. And she doesn't look too happy. <laughs> Available 2018 wherever Naga bars are sold. to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. Filmed in glorious grapple vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines pay-per-view by pay-per-view. This is your host, the mark among men, Braun Snowman. Oh yeah. AKA Jay Hunter. Join us ever with the man of a thousand bumps, our very own Rudolph Ziggler. <laughs> What's the story? Anyone? And Mr. Mixed Reaction himself, Roman Reindeer, <laughs> Mr. O.C. Be do. Do you like those wrestling puns? I, I got a ton of them. Oh, here we go. L.A. Xmas. I actually like that, that one. Michael Cole. That kind of works itself. Because of Bag of Cole. Yeah. Uh, so it didn't work, man. Mm. Heath Slater. <laughs> yes. Becky Grinch. Yeah. Mm. Candy Kane. Mm. Deck Mahal with Hardcore Holly. Oh, wow. Yeah, very nice. It's episode 68, Christmas Impact 2007, and it's coming up right now. Welcome, eggnoggers! Happy days Pear. Mince pear? <laughs> are you done with the puns? No. Oh. He's nowhere near it. <laughs> Have you haven't seen our Frogtown review? <laughs> Oh, there's probably stuff about frogs and toads and somebody croaks, they probably die, is it? Is that in there? Oh, you can depend on it. Oh, it's a tour of frogs, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's unfrogettable. Definitely not watching it there. No. <sighs> a Merry Christmas to everyone watching the show. And a Happy New Year to everyone watching the show. Just in case I don't give it a hit of <laughs> Happy Paddy's Day <laughs> to the show. <laughs> V1, how was FIFA? It's been better. Shaking your head there. I'm absolutely furious. Uh, Steve has once again taken the lead by Buck and crook. nefarious means. Big dirty own goal. Yeah. How was goal. that nefarious? It was nothing oh, to do with me. It was. I'm pretty sure you paid off my, my players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it was textbook, Jay. V1, will you plug your Twitch? I will indeed. Please come watch me on Twitch. I play many great games. Twitch.tv slash OSW Review. I usually stream a couple of nights a week and always good crack to be had. Excellent. Merch-wise, what have we got in the magic bag? OC, are there any Mr. OC toy and blazer badge combination packs left? <laughs> yes, but some of the boxes are a bit faded. I was made promises about storage that were not kept. <laughs> Very good. Big shout out to Brian Gazek. Gazek. I love this gimmick. Where's Peter Nguyen? <laughs> it's definitely not Gurjack. Maybe if he's, you know, like a Yank Polish guy, you know, like a. It'll be pronounced, each individual yeah. letter will be pronounced. Yeah, Brian Gurjack. <laughs> <laughs> For the awesome new artwork, Carl at OSW Review Tunes, Ben from Fiction Films, awesome to meet you, mate, and Chris from Reload Last Save, who was just the best. And with all our trifling and sherry out of the way, let's do it to it. Grammar that is. 
Shut the hell up, Santa. Prepare for an evening of brutality and violence so severe, it's enough to turn Rudolph's nose black and blue. Jubilant voiceover dude, not that Barry Scott kicked this silly bang guy. <laughs> <laughs> Kicks off with Shut the hell up, Santa. I marked out to that, actually, it was great. Tonight's impact will turn Rudolph's nose black and blue. He runs down the crazy Christmas gimmicks that, oh my God. Russo has his fingers in this show, doesn't he? Holy shit. A Christmas chaos cage match. A double North Pole match. Santa's workshop knockout street fight. A silent night bloody night match. And a grab the reindeer ladder match. But it's a bit of fun. It's Christmas. It's a weekly show. There's going to be 51 other episodes in the year. Cut them a bit of slack on this. These are gimmicked gimmick matches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh, it's perfect. He's going to be so impressed. Who is? Santa, he's on his way! Santa's on his way. <laughs> All through the night, we'll cut away to Eric Young's TNA Christmas party. His house is fucking massive. It's a bloody nice gaff, isn't it? It's not my house, it's a mock-up. <laughs> 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 they did set this up somewhere in the impact zone. So it looks like a TV studio, isn't it? Uh. We meet EY's family, hillbilly cousins Bruno and Tilly. Do you recognise them? That's Phi Delta Slam, a.k.a. TNA Security Fat Lads for the main event Mafia. Ah! Oh. Rocco and Sal. His sister, Kimberly the Monkey Girl. And wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! No! <laughs> he is going to quick rub and squeezy squeezy tonight, I can tell you, boys. <laughs> Which one is he? Uh, that's uh, Luke or Uncle Leo. Oh. It's kind of sad that there's only one, though, right? Surely you could have had two bags of ham and gotten the both of them. <laughs> We've got quite a guest list. Stay tuned. Is he here? Oh my god. Captain Morgan. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> Your boy, Steve. This is not his the highlight of his career in TNA. Jim Cornette has the night off, so Matt Morgan's in charge. How did he do here? He did it wrong. He was doing it like, um, are you ready to laugh? <laughs> you know, it's not like a, a cheap nightclub in Sheffield or whatever. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Come in, say your piece. And that should be enough to G up the crowd. Talk about the matches that are going to be on. Mm. So yeah, I was disappointed. Miscast. EY would have been a great choice to host it. But, you know, he's obviously doing the party. Like So Val, anyone. Oh, like, Steiner. You know. Get Steiner in there. Oh, yeah. Mm. That'd be amazing. Mm. Introducing first. What do you think about that? Sean, Sean <laughs> Joe. Sean Joe. Bolt. Our inaugural contest is an eight-man Christmas chaos cage match. It's the Rock and Rave Infection. Holy shit, Christy Hemi. Oh my god. Best ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pre-Bear Money Santa Storm with Miss Jackie. Tits ahoy. And Robert Rude with Miss Brooks. Tits ahoy. Versus LAX's Homicide and Hernandez, Scott Steiner and Booker T with Charmel. Any scandal, you ask? LAX have been attacking Chrissy Hemi unprovoked, and Booker's wife Charmel couldn't stand by and see Rude berate Miss Brooks any longer, giving their two men a reason to feud. Kick off! Steiner gets his shit in. Suplexes, clothesline, elbow, and push ups. Uh, you're done for the night. Cheers. <laughs> Overzealous LAX failed catapult into overhead choke toss. Jimmy Rave bumping like a boss. Holy shit. Making uh, Hernandez just look unstoppable. Also, just to, just to point out, is there a wrestler in the history of wrestling with a worse look than Lance Hoyt? 
Jimmy Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I always found he was very skinny looking. He's very tall and skinny. Like, he looks like Peter Crouch. <laughs> <laughs> also, that that hair with the, like, part in the middle with the two blonde bits. Uh, I went out with a girl that had that exact same hairstyle. So, uh, it's a girl's hairstyle. And it's a girl's... It's a tramp's tattoo. <laughs> We're going to take a commercial break. When we return to Thursday Night Impact, more of Christmas chaos in the Six Sides of Steel. Relaunched and redesigned. Did you get this cut to a TNA Wrestling.com ad mm. with the Five Bands of Doom ripoff song? It's supposed to be like the click, click, boom, the do, 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 and it's like do, 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 <laughs> clonk, clonk, bang. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy Ribbly Chiny and spins homicide right round, right round like a record, baby. XWCW and WWF lad Booker T gets the hot tag and absolutely smashes everyone out of it. Oh, yeah, because he's a real star, Jay. Christy knows the end is nigh and tries to introduce a chain, but interchangeable Latino nation thug scares her off. During this big schmoz, Booker hits the bookend to the raver and gets the win for the owl lads. Very short, very rushed. Everyone just running around, doing moves, spots. It was a bit of a mess. But hey, who cares? Christy Hemi looked amazing. That's all I really cared about. Dave Meltzer, six and a quarter star. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, absolute mayhem. Just blah. Noise. Oh, actually, state of L hoity toity. <laughs> oh, yeah, however, yeah. yes. <laughs> and uh, good on him getting Christy. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, mate. Back at EY's, he's answering the door each time, hoping for Santa. The beautiful people come first. Foir. <laughs> <laughs> ODB, she will bartend. And Kong, cool mittens. Velvel says they'll service the guests, and if they be nice, give them Christmas cheer. They're prostitutes. Well, they said service the guests. That they, services don't necessarily need to be exchanged for money. Money. Oh, so money. You, you can just get a an old fashioned. Well, no, it's just like it's a free service. Oh, dirty bitches! <laughs> Ey just got off the phone with them. It's like <laughs> she says she's blown these guys away. <laughs> Match number two is a double North Pole match. <laughs> it's Team 3D with Brother Divine versus the Motor City Machine Guns and Jay Lethal. Oh my God, that Santa outfit on Bubba. Wow. I've never seen a worse look. Hold on. You saw Steve that day. <laughs> <laughs> In in Orlando, what's worse? Side by side pictures, Jay. Like this guy looks like he's smuggling fish under his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> worse than Johnny Divine and his elf scants. Oh my god! Did Divine put these costumes together? Yeah, I'd say so. Hey, yeah. he's like a seam seamster. <laughs> <laughs> it's one? like the Hulkster, <laughs> but with clothing. <laughs> Break out the midgets. But get rid of them before WWE make a juniors division. <laughs> Which is back in 2005. I hear Midget used to be derogatory, but then Dwarves kind of owned it and they turned it into a positive. So they like being called Midgets. Mm. Who's first? Who's first? What's your name, little boy? So Midget, <laughs> Motor City Machine Guns and Machismo ask Santa Ray what they all really want for Christmas. Midget Saban enjoys bouncing on Santa's lap. That was hilarious. Cut to AJ shouting faggot at them. <laughs> this is Chris Saban, and you're watching XMV on NoDQ.com. Yeah. AJ's a fag! Yeah. Uh, AJ's known for just shouting, hurling the word faggot at his opponents. In uh, the ring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, out of fans, whatever, you know. He's big into Christian, big into calling people faggots. <laughs> oh my god. Midget Shelly, he wants a new PC to put yourself over on your MySpace account that 38 people will see. It's amazing. Bubba Ray was great here as Santa. 
Midget Machismo wants a night with SoCal Val, who is Machismo's bird, and he says... Here's five dollars. Make sure you bring me my change. That's very good. <laughs> it's a great line. Two great lines. Yeah. And I love how he just pushed off the midget after Reach was done. He was just like, get away, you. Brilliant. Now, this segment shouldn't have worked because it's 2007. This is kind of like the 97 night after the screw job. And was it Bret Hart yeah, yeah, comes yeah. out with the midget Bret yeah, Hart? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Bubba made it work because he's fucking hilarious. He was so good that he made this absolute bollocks work. Divine Candy canes them, hearkening the real guns and machismo and the start of our double North Pole match. What's on the line? You get to pick the stimp at next month's pay-per-view. Either Ultimate X, which is on the left pole, or a plate glass table match, which is on the right pole. So the guns would want the Ultimate X, whilst the Dudleys would want the glass table. Divine and the Saban start off with a spooge exchange, including a hold hands multiple stomp. You see, got some up. That was really awesome. It was really cool. Saban's awesome, by the way. Oh my god, he's so good. Machismo, double axe handle in. <gasps> oh god. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. His jocks start falling down immediately. Steve, I thought your watch has ended. (laughs) (laughs) Boba Ray jocks watch. Oh, holy shit. How many times in three minutes did the camera catch Boba Ray fixing his jocks? Fifteen. Nine. Six. Well, you fucked up there by this. Yeah, I I did. You you just ruined it, Steve. (laughs) (laughs) It's actually sound not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Wondering about Bubba's X sucks tea, the Dudleys tried to eliminate the entire X division starting in October that year. Lethal reverses a WZF, and little Alex Shelley hits it instead. Bubba was very safe here. He guarded his balls with his life. And I don't blame him. Midgets have big heads. <laughs> <laughs> Pull Divine's legs as he straddles the turnbuckle, and that takes him out. Midget toss to Devon. Wow, wow. <laughs> Guns double team, uh, down and right bumper, and up and right bumper. Machismo stereo, little and large, macho elbow. Oh, it was perfect. I loved this spot. Oh, it was great. And Shelley retrieves the gimmick stocking to end the match in nine minutes. The faces win, and the rematch at final resolution will be an ultimate X match, which the heels won. Yeah, well, they have to. You have to win the match you're not supposed to win. That's wrestling booking. I remember that match, and I seem to remember it being lots of fun. They sneakily just got a ladder and climbed that up. Yes! Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. And of course, uh, 3D physically held the X Division belt, although Lethal had it. And they're like, hey, one more match, good versus evil. You win, the X Division will ban. You lose, you give us back the belt, and the baby faces win. And huzzah. Huzzah. Uh, thank fuck we didn't have the plate glass tables. I mean, the, what was it the last yeah. time Christian got put through it and they brought out the bloody tails to wipe him <laughs> yeah. down? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Should have washed them first. <laughs> oh, God. Back at Eric Young's gaff. Who's next? Kevin Nash. And he doesn't get dressed up. He brings a bottle of Bolly with him. Santa's coming. He's coming. Santa's coming? Yeah. He ain't the only one, buddy. Uh, he ain't the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed out loud with that. That was amazing. Oh, Kevin Nash. Never in cash. cash. ODB. Bam! You're a slut. <laughs> <laughs> I actually kind of marked out to that a bit. Holy titty balls. Oh my God. Oh, yes. <sighs> Karen and TNA champ Kurt show up. Kurt tries to explain Santa's not real, but EY laughs it off. EY tells him that he can serve as Kurt if he needs it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Oh, oh, oh. Can you service me? Yeah. Can what I service you, you? What are you, a cupcake? Next up, match number three is a no DQ, nine knockout Santa's workshop match. <laughs> Say that ten times fast, eh? 
So, and um, anything goes, Brawl, with weapons in a wooden toy box. ODB, Roxy Levyux with Snowman Voodoo Doll. Pride of Tennessee, Miss Jackie Moore, Christy Hemi, Miss Brooks with Mistletoe, 272 and 3 eighths pounds, Awesome Kong, The Beautiful People, Angelina Love and Velvet Sky, and Gail Kim coming out last, who goes straight for Kong and they schmals on the outside. Schmals on the inside. The girls empty the box and have at it. ODB turns it over on Angelina Love and poses atop but gets a receipt with being bum pushed out <laughs> they are holding the box for about 10 seconds and they're waiting for it and then the two girls have to start screaming and i think it's jackie like fucking move it's our spot <laughs> a dazed but victorious kong returns and the action stops she clears the ring. Laveau has a great laugh. A voodoo walking. She's like... <laughs> <laughs> and she just gets smashed in the face with a back. That was very funny. That was a good spot. And Karma Police pulls in an escaping Hemi and hits a big powerbomb on her for the win. Tanae calls Kong the winner of the first ever Santa's Workshop match. Put that on the resume. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they love beating Christy Hemi, don't they? Well, she's probably laughing all the way to the I'm bank. I'm sure she is. Yeah. She's like, ha! I'm getting 350 grand a year? Fuck you! Kim gets her heat back until security separate them. It's still this feud, and I even at the time, I remember when I'm watching the weekly show, this feud is still going strong. Both wrestlers are built so well. It's simple but effective. It's the best thing going on in TNA at this time. Yeah, great stuff. This match was a nothing match. It was mostly girls walking around waiting to do their one move. But as an angle to build up Kong and Gale, it was great. Definitely the best women's feud in wrestling that I can think of. And one of TNA's greatest ever pieces of booking. Mm -hmm. Fair fucks to everyone. Even Johnny Devine. (laughs) (laughs) Especially Johnny Devine. Back at the TNA Christmas party, I love how this is obviously on a set, but not backstage, but they book EY segments like it was, like it's happening in real time. So wrestlers come and go based on what has happened on TV. I can't believe this company had the patience and foresight to book this that well. It's like the women brawl before their match and they're gone afterwards. You don't Mm -hmm. see them back anymore. So Calval brings Mistletoe to get a kiss from Jay Lethal, but... Oh, fucking Sanjay runs in and robs the kiss. Devious heel. Does this kick off the feud? Well, it doesn't kick off the feud, but he's been trying to horn in for a while. Oh, okay. Well, he is definitely trying to horn in. You? <laughs> and he was so happy with himself. He's like, ah, chicken his tambourine. Oh, I loved it. That's very cartoon family-friendly villain. You know, he sneaked the kiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, who comes in next? What's up, Eric? All right, Chris Harris. Thanks for inviting me, bro. All right, Chris Harris. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what an actor, This eh? is the highlight of his entire year. He made a funny. He did. But everything leading up to the lion, I'm just like, this guy, mate. Holy shit. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> so Harris was saying that he's pissed off because it's his birthday on Christmas and nobody was celebrating his birthday. And EY brings up, well, there's another guy whose birthday is celebrated on Christmas, JC. And uh, Harris says, what? I didn't know Jim Cornette's birthday is on Christmas. <laughs> that is very good. <laughs> oh, that is very that good. Was brilliant. It actually it was. Very good. Yeah. 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 It is his, the best thing we've seen from him in this uh, story arc. And will be the best thing until he shows up in ECW on That's... the stage with his arms folded. <laughs> 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 You got the power. <laughs> you got the might. No way. Get ready for battle. Give me your money. Beat the black knight. <laughs> it's a history of Junior Messias and Relic. <laughs> oh my god. Two for the price of one, Jay. Woo. Yes, so Abyss was under the control of his manager, Jim Mitchell. He started making buddies with Babyface Sting, so Sinister Minister put pressure on him, saying he'd pulled him out of prison and shaped him to become the monster. How did he get him out of prison? 
probably got the big that owl copter that they have from Watchmen. <laughs> 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 Don't forget, Chris Abyss here, he stood by and watched his mom shoot his dad. But Abyss wasn't falling back in line, and Jim brought in Judas Macias to force him to. Father James still holds secrets above Abyss's head, and he's like, tell the truth, go bull global. So Jim Mitchell is Abyss's dad. Yes. Jim Mitchell is very small and slight, Abyss is massive. So what does Abyss's mother look like? <laughs> <laughs> Him in a wig, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> in Kayfabe, is Jim Mitchell also Judas Macias' dad as well? No, they were no? never supposed to be brothers or anything like that, I don't think. No. Okay, no. okay. So it's just, he's just some random Hen- henchman. Little fella that he got from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> a little Mexican. <laughs> I just I have so much trouble trying to buy this guy as a monster. Ricky Banderas. <laughs> Ricky Banderas. With the Spanx. Yeah. Yes. He's like a monster that's literally gotten shrunk or shrinked or shrinking. Shrunk. Shrunken. Shrank. Like he wouldn't have looked out of place on Bubba's knee earlier <laughs> on <in> the night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Spitting blood all over the place. <laughs> oh, he gets him a bib. <laughs> Ruined. <laughs> but what of relic, which is killer spelled backwards? Thank you, Stephen. You know the way Dustin Rhodes has a split personality. Well, it's split into four between boring ass Dustin Rhodes, WWF Goldust, WCW Seven, and TNA's Black Rain. Well, Relic is the embodiment of Dustin Rhodes' darkest, deepest nightmare. Then how is he wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> but Black Rain is from the deepest, darkest corner of his mind. Uh, of his mind, yeah. Or is Relic the deepest, darkest corner of Black Rain's mind? Oh my oh, god. Oh, that's really, that's meta. What would be awesome then if you were watching wrestlers watching TV backstage, you know, standing up and looking sideways as you do. <laughs> And on screen, there is no relic. There's just people bumping. <gasps> like, can you imagine if somebody was able, like somebody athletic was able to take a power bomb without anyone there? <laughs> that would be impressive. <laughs> it would be impressive. <laughs> it would be a fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah, so really we have two characters, Abyss and Black Rain, and each of those got a spin-off character. So it's like V1 and Ultimo Generico, and I got out Mucho Original. Yeah. 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 Or would like Jay Hunter and Mr. Owens. And the spreadsheet. (laughs) (laughs) Bing. Bong. Bang. (laughs) What a video. (laughs) I thought his bell tolls are supposed to be scary, but they're actually quite Christmassy, you know? Yeah. Oh. It's Silent Night, Bloody Night. Not the 1972 film. Anyway. <laughs> but a Christmas-themed four-way hardcore match featuring From the Depths of Hell, Relic. But aren't you from Black Rain's mind? Continuity. Mm. Come on, mate. Get it out. Is there anyone in this match from an actual place? Relic, Black Rain or not? Abyss, where's Abyss from? Jim's basement. <laughs> <laughs> And Shark Boy is from the ocean's yeah, depths or something. Yeah, so nobody <laughs> is really from anywhere. Wow. Yeah, there you go. That's amazing, Steve. Yeah. Did you like Shark Boy coming out covered in plasters? He even had little plasters <gasps> on his fin. I loved it so much. It was great, wasn't it? It's so cute. <laughs> oh my god. No, me, no. Dude, he was killed last month. At Bound for Glory. Oh, he's man. Just, he's lost that aura. <laughs> when Raven slapped him on the bum and yeah. told him to go yeah. home. Oh, and Jesus. Sent him packing, like. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he, he, like, blew his nose into snot right? <laughs> 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 So, Abyss, the way he walks to the ring, he always does the gimmick where he pushes the camera. Do you think the cameramen would, might just move out of the way, you know? Because they're always like, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You know, they're the Every fall. Yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Imagine if we went to push it and it moved and he just fell over. Oh <laughs> I 
never seen anyone so obsessed with trying to eliminate another man like Mitchell is with a bus. And it all revolves around the secret that the two of them know. Kick off, Abyss and Rain schmoz on the outside as Sharkboy tees off on Relic. The monster with a shit big boot running bum tackle and the heels respond with a heart attack. Nice. Goldie hits the dribbly pedigree. <laughs> Did you mark out for that? Every the, time. The whoopsie pedigree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. And we see that Jim Mitchell has shown up because like every match someone has to Say hello. Did you like the hanging barbed wire Xmas tree? Yeah, it looks amazing. Shark Boy gets thrown into it and bumps out he like you know, bullet off Wonder Woman's uh, gauntlets, you know, just <laughs> pew <laughs> <laughs> He goes into it pew and uh, let's just talk about the Christmas tree bumps. <laughs> So uh, the babies want to get Black Rain and Relic into the corner turnbuckle and so their Irish whip reversed into it but the Christmas tree hangs in front of the turnbuckle so they have to run at it and then but go back into the turnbuckle. It's so bad. (laughs) (laughs) Something doesn't uh, feel right about this, Jay. And then Black Rain tries the Irish whip Relic into it and he runs up to it and just stops. That's right. I mean, like, this doesn't happen in wrestling, like, ever. Once you're whipped. Oh, you're done for. So what happens if you're, like, near the ramp and you Irish whip someone towards the ramp? They're gone. They're, They'll just run back They'll keep stage. going until somebody hits them. I think that's how it is in SmackDown vs. Raw. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real luck. <laughs> Did you like the pendulum bump that they did with the... Where they pull the tree back to the corner and... Pew! I love it. They try to push it with all their all their might, but like it just it's very slow. So Black Rain grabs it and he's like, uh He starts to hug it. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck on the tree. Oh I love wrestling so much. Shark Boy takes a nice slingshot face plant. Open and present. Oh, it's Lucille, a barbed wire baseball bat. By the way, you have a baseball bat with barbed wire there's a tree with barbed wire we brought out specially for you it's a bag <laughs> DW marks out oh, a bag <laughs> <laughs> how amazing would it be if he opened up the bag tilted out and just big plop of ham falls out <laughs> <laughs> it'd be fucking amazing wouldn't it uh, it's a bag of tax. Don West says it's thousands and thousands of tax, as we saw literally dozens <laughs> and dozens of tax. I mean, max, like... A couple of hundred. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Fucking hell. Abyss gets a bag of glass, and he pours it beside the little mountain of tax, like, wow, Abyss's gimmicks mean nothing. No. They're driven into the ground. Uh, lights off. Wow, seamless edit. This is what happens if you don't do it live. It was great. This was like what WWE do live. Well done. That. <laughs> <laughs> it's Junior Macias. <laughs> Who would have known? <laughs> Couldn't have him in the match because there'd be too many heels, hence Shark Boys in it. I think matches always work well if the heels have more. But it does make more sense to save it because you're obviously trying to build up to a pay-per-view match with these guys. Not that it's going to who's buying it for a fucking junior, you know? <laughs> Come on. Senior Missy. <laughs> uh, Missy does his straight to hell finisher, which is a jumping turn push. I have written here a jumping self rock bottom. <laughs> uh, uh, he found the move actually shitter than a self rock bottom. <laughs> and Abyss bumps onto the tax. Relic hits Goldberg's jackhammer, a.k.a. the Demon Driver, on Sharkboy, and Relic gets the win. Relic with the Demon Driver on Sharkboy. One, two, no chance for Sharkboy. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, Relic. There you go, Silent Night, Bloody Night. Yeah, it was fine. It's the same old stuff, the same old stuff from Abyss. It's the same every single month. Or every week, even. He's still doing it, yeah. and it's ten years later, Yeah, exactly, Steve. yeah. And at this point, he's been doing it for, what, six years? Oh, God. That's 16 yeah. years of <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> well, I was so disappointed. So, did Junior ever actually wrestle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't remember it. Yep. 
He, you know, he had, a, he had his match with Abyss. Did he? Yeah, On yeah. the next pay-per-view, is it? Must have been. Oh, wait. Which final resolution? There's two in 2008. Oh, God. They do in oh, January and December. Yeah. Do they? Oh, that's clever. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Did you like the match? No. But, like, I like... <laughs> <laughs> But I I loved seeing Relic, Shark Boy, Black Rain, and Junior. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to like it because Mia and Relic and Shark Boy, but <laughs> Shark Boy, the injured comedy jobber who <laughs> completely <laughs> sold, beat the shit out of Relic and Black Rain for four <laughs> minutes straight. <laughs> he fucking <laughs> murdered them. <laughs> Poor guys <laughs> And then of course Just the same old shit Fucking Junior popping out Self rock bottoms Yeah oh Man no, I hate it <laughs> oh, I, I'm with Uke on this uh, Bollocks but I loved seeing them all It was amazing A tour de force they were too not long enough for this world. <laughs> Tour de farce. <laughs> <laughs> They're too beautiful for this world. <laughs> In Joe's locker room, Crystal asks him if he's going to the Christmas party tonight because they taped this segment before Eric Young's. Grinch Joe says instead of spending money on a party, they should have added something to his paycheck. It's a bit cunty, isn't Is it? he supposed to be babyface or heel at this point? I, he's, he's just a, he's having a, a moan. <laughs> Babyface. He's uh, the big really? hero. Yeah, yeah. It's like the worst possible heel, whingy bitch. Like. The only thing that could have made it worse is if like, his ma came out <laughs> and started going, Yeah, Joe, you tell me. <laughs> In a Dublin accent. <laughs> Later, Joe crashes the party, confronts Morgan, saying Cornette can stick his contract and you can find him at home before trashing the set and bringing down the tree. Just thought it was just unpleasant. Mm. Yeah. Do you reckon he's sorry though? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the party ruined. All is lost. JB quietly tells EY Santa's make believe. Moments before the man in the red suit shows up and EY goes, <laughs> Santa. It'd be amazing if he was wearing a hat and I went Bloop, and <laughs> up into the vent. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that's the like Christmas version of a chubby. Like. <laughs> hey kid, you want to see the North Pole? <laughs> oh, oh <geez. laughs> so that means it's Tam for your murder band. It's your main event, a reindeer ladder match. It's AJ Styles versus Ritz Kyles. Retrieve <laughs> the reindeer head to win. Losers gotta wear the suit. Straight to the outside, AJ gets hoofed out over the barricade, but comes back with a phenomenal forearm. Shortening his career, Styles takes a suplex to the outside onto a ladder. You can see both these guys blocking the other one. Oh my god! And he sells for approximately three seconds. <laughs> Kaz climbs the ladder. What's the deal with motioning? Uh, they go up to reach it when you're on the second yeah, rung. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every ladder match since the dawn of time. Yeah. AJ climbs the ladder. He does a backflip off the ladder into an inverted DDT. It's inch, no, millimeter perfect. He's the best. Spooge McDuck. Yes. Him on top of the rope. The flat earther teases a Styles clash from the top turnbuckle onto a ladder, but is reversed into a back body drop. Oh, jeez, I was worried AJ might have sprained his ankle on the landing, but he's okay. Yeah. Both go to the top. AJ hip tosses Kaz down to the mat. Look out! AJ's AJ got it! Oh my god! So it must be the finish. Kurt Angle comes to the ring. Uh, AJ is part of the Angle Alliance inadvertently distracting AJ, getting him dumped off. This gives Kaz the chance to climb up and grab the reindeer head, winning the match. 
uh, Angle coming out. I know what they're, they didn't want AJ to lose clean. So Angle came out. Why not send somebody else out who's feuding with AJ? It's so ridiculous. It was like the Rodney, the Piper and Virgil. Get up. You know, it's like, <laughs> why are you telling him to do something that is completely unnecessary to do? And, like, that, he's, to, and that he's currently he's doing? doing. And I, don't, I just didn't understand it. It was terrible booking. Go up and grab the reindeer. Yeah. What? What do you say? I can't <laughs> understand you. So that was disappointing. They could have done something else there. It was a fucking awesome match. Yeah. Throw away, as you say, comedy TV match around Christmas time. Nobody's fucking watching. <laughs> and you go and put on this. Lads, I don't know. You're, you're both awesome. This match was great, even though it was short and it meant absolutely nothing. It was a great match. Two excellent workers. But AJ wore the turkey suit about a month earlier and he's wearing this. It was like, he's the best wrestler in the world. Why is he a goof? See, I think the problem is when he put on the turkey suit, he did such a great job selling it. Yeah. And it's like, right, you're our go-to guy. Mm. I'll give him his due. He did a whopper job here as well. A yeah. whopper job. A question. AJ versus Kaz reindeer ladder match. Why would you compete in this match to begin with? Absolutely. If the winner got something, then yeah, Kaz sure. Kaz didn't even hang around after. He's like, yeah. <laughs> 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 he fucked off immediately. <laughs> He protests, he does his comedy pratfall, and he just swabs around, you know, brilliant stuff. And it's like, ah, the Rudy Charles there, ah, rah, rah, you tell him, Rudy, you know. And <gasps> did you see who, is el- who else was in the congregation of referees there? Slick Johnson. Way better. Earl Hebner. Way better. Shane Stewart! <laughs> <laughs> Boy alert. <laughs> I did not see that. My boy radar was uh, a skew. <laughs> Your boy there. <laughs> oh, Mark, Mark that's so hard seeing him. Um, I like I love how AJ sells the reindeer head when he puts it on. It's like, ah, oh, oh. so, you know, well done, mate. Kurt is furious at him and his punishment for disgracing him is AJ has to say, I am not a reindeer a thousand times. Now go do it. Don't hug me. Don't hug me. Big finish. Uh, Santa and EY come to ringside as they throw out presents, specifically DVDs, foam fingers, teas, and shit you couldn't move at the merch stand. (laughs) (laughs) Santa gives Angle a TNA DVD and he's like, oh, 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 fucks it off. Um, do you like the way Kurt Angle holds his belt? It's, it's like a waiter or something. <laughs> like with the tea towels. Uh, concierge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hot towels. <laughs> I'd never really noticed that before. No, yeah. no. Because I think of people that hold belts oddly. I think of JBL, he holds it like it's folded that in. That was great. I love know. that. Yeah. 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 Kurt Angle says he wishes Christian had a pair of balls for Christmas. And then he clotheslines Santa, tosses out EY, and makes Santa tap. Woo! Cut to a shot of... Making, making kids, kids cry, cry bruh. Christian comes out of a big package. <laughs> package. Package. <laughs> and reverse, reverse cage slaps on the ankle lock on Kurt Angle to build to next month's final resolution. Hit a song by the DX band, Broke In, recapping the show, and we're out. There we go. Let's take it to the aftermath. Christian Cage, Kurt Angle, for the TNA World's title and final resolution. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas, everybody, from TNA. So, Christmas Impact 2007, what did you think, Luke? Typical episode of Impact. So, <laughs> <laughs> reindeer every week, <laughs> fucking Santa 52 weeks a year. I think he's going to peak around January. <laughs> <laughs> Just like them pumpkin sales. <laughs> Bit of bollocks. 
some entertaining segments. EY features heavily, and he does like kind of week to week to some inter- entertaining stuff, some awesome wrestling. You're always going to get a rip roaring ninety minutes of entertainment with Impact. Love it or hate it, you won't be bored. And it's just like this episode. It was so easy to watch, and I I quite enjoyed it. I have to say. Hmm. I thought it was a fun but silly show. Most of the matches were rushed and a little bit short, a bit bollocksy. But I thought Bubba was great. Uh, he was one of the highlights of the show. Both of the guns looked awesome. AJ and Kaz bumped like bosses, had a great match when they really shouldn't have. EY and Christy Hemi. Uh, Karen Angle. Oh, Karen Angle. Holy shit. And this show was a very easy watch. Silly, but fun. All right. Oh, by the way, this show, it's 2007 TNA. So what's the rating? Oh, 1.1. Bang. (laughs) (laughs) Because we're about five years straight. That's, they'll never gain fans, but never lose fans. Until they did. (laughs) It's like 200,000 hours. It's so bad. Oh my God. Overall, this show is so fucking intense. The wrestlers work so fast, and the commentators spend half the match explaining the convoluted rules and how this gimmick match will lead to another gimmick match. Oh yeah, TNA Mobile, oh yeah, here's an ad break. Pimp the gimmick matches and consequences later on tonight. Splice in entrances during entrances, like Joe backstage during the Beautiful People's entrance. I was physically drained after finishing this show. This is Russo's wet dream car crash (laughs) booking. It's like a parody of Russo matches. I was like, so what sank in? You know, because they don't let things breathe. So what sank in? What, Nothing. What do I remember? It's like, I had no idea Velvet Sky was an actual tramp. <laughs> you know, <laughs> showing up at a party asking if she can service any guys around. There were midgets. EY is brilliant, very quick-witted, and funny lines and setups for other people. AJ and Kaz had this no-resting video game match where they just go, just specials all around. And Relic is killer spelled backwards. (laughs) (laughs) All that said, thoroughly enjoyed being back in TNA. Lots of funny, corny and lewd jokes, plenty of laughs and ultra talented wrestlers that are given 40 seconds to get all their shit in. Oh, God. Uh, Thumbs up. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, do we usually... Yeah, let's take it to a time for the wrestling is... (laughs) Yep. Oh, <laughs> Karen Angle comes out. <laughs> Segment. Awesome. This year, we're all lending a helping hand. What? A Best of Raven DVD? We have thousands of those in stock. That's what you really want? What? What am I wearing? I'm wearing a mask with a skull on it. What are you... Am I hot? Of course I'm hot. Have you ever worn one of these things? Paquete nada, loco! Yo tarro loco! Homicide, homicide. How many times do I have to tell you the customer is always right? Mira, mamacita, yo no quiero hablar nada de ti. Yo tengo paquete, paquete todo gente ahora, okay? You know I don't speak French. <laughs> oh, happy holidays, yes, from TNA Wrestling. All oh, the good little boys and girls out there. Next day delivery, next day delivery. Midgets, monkeys, mistletoe, and Mr. Claus. Our Christmas special is on the books. In the pocket. How to say. What could the new year bring? Well, next up is the Golden Noggers. And hopefully some I'm bleeping this out. And hopefully our new bleeping this out. Oh, we have some free weekly updates on Nogger U to keep you abreast of everything we're doing. So you can watch all of our episodes. Fuck! Free of charge and an IMAX player at 43 full screen at... OSWReview.com And if you want to... I was going to slip us a couple of bucks. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to buy us a pint, you can. And watch some exclusive videos, including deleted scenes and film reviews. The last one we did was... Hell Comes the Frog Town with Roddy Piper. And you can watch that at 
nuggeru.owreview.com. Koblamo, Steve. Two in a row. Wow. You've been practicing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve, what's on tap on Twitch? I'm thinking about having a Mass Effect journey soon, Jay. Working my way through all four over the coming months. Excellent. It's going to be emotional. And where can we see this? Twitch.tv forward slash OSW review. Oh, yeah. So, it's a goodbye from Mosey. They do. And we will. Take a boo. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. Can we do like a Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas! Christmas. I really enjoyed that. It's Christmas Day, lads. Uh, so, you've opened up your presents. What did you get from Santi? If you're a culture, Santa, if you're <laughs> outside. Culture town. Culture town. Well, we're both cultures now. Yeah, fucking hell. There we go. Um, I already got my present before today. Oh, really? Yeah. What was it? A phone. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What type? Uh, one Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Rotary. <laughs> <laughs> a car phone. <laughs> and Stephen, what did you get? I don't know. <laughs> it's all a surprise. He came here, he got up at six in the morning, came here to do yeah. the review. <laughs> uh, I haven't quite opened up my presents yet. I'm going to wait until I get home tonight, Jay. Good oh. stuff. Get home tonight, your wife and fucking child sitting there all day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 11 p.m. I, 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 hold on a sec. You have heat now, don't you? <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I got my got Red the, Mysterio the Batista calendar. Power Rangers t shirt. There you go. So, uh, you know, bag of dick something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't order this bag of dicks. Do you want the receipt? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where this goes. <laughs>